Hey everyone, welcome back to Eden Talk. Um, just want to address my voice really quick. I am recovering. I lost my voice, but it's coming back. But I'm really excited to be recording an episode with this voice because I feel like I sound hot as hell. So um, shout out to that. And also, I wouldn't do this for anybody else, but I'm doing it for a special guest that we have today. And he's someone that you guys have seen before, but it's been a few years. And now he's grown and back mm -hmm. with a brand and so much successful news. And I'm really excited to catch up with him. And he also brought his friend and we're really excited to learn all about him. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Um, let's start with you, OD. Introduce yourself. Um, hey, guys. Which camera am I looking at? You're going to be looking at this, this one? one. Yes. Right, cool, cool, cool. What's up, <laughs> y'all? My setup, I know. <laughs> this, is, this is so much better. It's fire. I love it. Amazing. Um, what's up, y'all? My name OD. I'm here with Yusra on Eat and Talk, yes, and we're gonna get right back. into it. Yes, <laughs> and uh, we have. Uh, I'm not gonna mess it up this time, so I'm just gonna let oh, you yeah. say it. <laughs> uh, my name is Marshawn. Um, Marshawn, the real. And the don't realtor. and don't be shy. Don't be humble, oh, no. as Gilbert likes to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does say that. yeah. <laughs> um, so let's really get let's get into it. Okay, OD. Um, as we know from the last episode that we shot, you're a phenomenal barber. That's like your staple thing but Thank also you. your creator you're an artist you're so many things and um i just kind of want to catch up where have you been at what have you been up to in the last really two years i know it's been a lot so i'll kind of let you take the lead like how's barbering been going is that something you're still doing of course okay of course of yeah course. and i and i seen that like you have a new home yeah okay so where where are you now tell us a little bit about that um, I'm back where I originally started, Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, so when I left Minneapolis, I moved to Miami for like a couple months and then I moved back to Madison. Wow. Yeah. So now I'm in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. I have my own shop over there. Okay. So. Well, congratulations. Thank we you, love to you. hear that. But for you to have your own shop, that's yeah. really amazing. Thank you. Thank and you. I think that's so inspirational for people. So thank thanks you. for sharing that. I appreciate it. And that. how was Miami? Too lit, too yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I seen you were having a good time out there. Yeah, Miami was just it's that it was lit. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, met a lot of people. Yeah, so yeah, that's awesome. And I remember back then you were like, "Yusra, I'm about to start Dream Boy." Yeah, yeah. And you were working on Dream Boy, so tell us a little bit about that. Um, like yeah, what I've is been, what is Dream Boy? First of all, Dream Boy is for all the dreamers, man. For everybody that got inspiration to follow the American dream as I believe that is still alive. Um, you know, me, I was born back home in Africa, so I was kind of born not on the other side of the tracks, but the other side of that track, you know? Right. So it's like being in America, realizing that you can make the dreams become a reality. Yeah. And that's what Dream Boy is about, you know? Guys like him. Dream yeah. Boy. That's why I brought you here, bro. Yes. You know that, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out yeah. to D, man. Yeah. Love, for sure. For and Marshawn, sure. yeah, tell brother. us, you also have a lot of amazing things going on, and you, they always say, like, you know, who you keep around and, and who your circle of friends is is really important. So, like, why are you here? Why is it important that you guys, you know, came to eat and talk today? Like, I mean, the value. I mean, it's it's amazing. I believe in um, real energy and connection. So, I mean, I connected with OD like a while ago. I just kind of sensed it in him. I didn't know he was young at first, but I just seen him hustling um, from going to the shop. I get my I got my haircut at Aquas since probably like 2016. Yeah. But seeing him in like the new Aqua shops and I didn't know he was like around my age, but I seen him like hustling. I respected that. So I just you know, let him know. And then we got cool o over time. Um, but it was a, a friendship I didn't know I needed until now because it's further more than a friendship. It's a friendship, a business uh, partnership, brotherhood, um, yeah. brotherhood, all of that. Um, and like today, another connection I didn't know I needed. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. For um, sure. The, the connection is just endless, to be yeah. honest. I'm, I'm big on networking, too. Yeah, so I'm well, glad to be here meeting you guys as well. Yeah, we're happy to meet you, and we're happy to have you here. So thank you. Crazy thank thing, you. I never cut his hair ever before. Yeah. I, I, I still haven't cut his hair. It, bro. Really? I swear, but it's like my friends cut him. Yeah. And I always seen him in the shop. Mm -hmm. He always, like, stayed consistent with, like, his attitude. Yeah. And I pay attention to stuff like that. Like, right. some people, okay. you'll meet them one day, they're one person. The next day, they're another person. For him, since I've met him in, like, 2020 when I moved to Minneapolis to go work at Aquas, he's been he, he got cut by smooth so he's been consistent every time I seen him and then when I moved back to Madison I mean to Miami and in Madison we kind of stayed in touch like through Instagram yeah. like showing each other love and shit like that 
this is actually the first time we've ever hung out, like in real life. Actually, yeah. today is the first time we ever hung out. Really? Yeah. You were just like, "Come on, I was like, man, I'm going to eat and talk." Yeah. I didn't even tell him actually. Yeah, you didn't know. He didn't know. I didn't yeah, know. It yeah, was, it was super random. I'm, I get here first. I'm like, uh, so yeah. where I'm at? He's yeah. like. Uh, we're at a podcast. Well, what you mean we're at a podcast? Yeah. They didn't let me know that. That's so beautiful like because he wanted you to, you know, he said he, you know, also wanted to talk about like you have some great things going on too. So you also have a clothing brand. Yeah. Okay. It's called uh, The Hottest. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. Why is it The Hottest? How'd you come up with that name? I mean, okay. A little smooth backstory behind it. Um, It's just kind of lingo. You know, my one of my friends was always saying like something's hot and that was validation for it's like top of the line. Right. And when I was kind of thinking of a brand, um, my vision behind it was like premium. And when you're in it, like you're the hottest, you're the you're wearing the best stuff or some of the best stuff. So um, I built my brand behind like fashion, not the name. So the name says enough about the brand, but I don't really put my logo on a lot of things. I want to just express and show mm -hmm. how it's the hottest, you know? Yeah. Um, that's how I came about. But then it's it's just me really expressing myself through like another avenue. Yeah. And I think that's so important. I just really want to like highlight how important how important it is as like young black men mm -hmm. putting your time with things that you love to do and like your passion, your heart, instead of like, you know, going around and wasting your life and, you know, getting in trouble. I love that you guys were able to turn like your vision into reality or your dreams into reality. Dream boy, dream exactly, boy. Exactly, you know. Him, so I think that's so beautiful. Um, so let's kind of get into the logistics about like, what were some of like the hardest things both of you for like starting your brand what were some obstacles that you guys had to like go through i'll let you go first um i would say starting out anything production wise or selling wise you got to have the right connections when it comes to people or products so the hardest part i feel like was finding manufacturers who to trust and also getting the money because if you're not already making money it costs a lot they Upfront um, acts for hundreds from graphic designers to manufacturers for shipping, everything. So it was, I would say like finding the, a good manufacturer and then um, really like getting the funding for it. But yeah. it's like you, you got to go to overdrive if you really want some. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that was like the hardest part. I feel like starting up. Yeah. OK. How yeah. about you? For me, I would um, say the same thing he said, mm -hmm. like funding, because for me, it's like. Money, like, you know, sometimes money can be tough. Um, especially when you're starting something new. Um, another thing I would also say is just the research part and oh the trial God. and error. Oh my God. The research say, part, yeah. yeah, the research and then trial and error. Like, because you might do, like for me, I haven't dropped um, my brand in two years just because I wanted to see the material I made and how it wore off throughout time. Because mm -hmm. from um, with Dream Boy, I want it to be something that's vintage, one day in 2050 2060 yeah. and in order for something to be vintage it has to be good quality and if it's not good quality it's not going to be vintage yeah and Thanks. some Thanks. yeah some of the stuff i made um it, it actually like turned out really bad just because i didn't know the process because I, I didn't have any help it was like just learning. me yeah, yeah i was just learning which is mm -hmm. i know that because through barbering i had to go through the same thing so yeah. i wasn't putting as much pressure on myself that's why when people ask me, oh, when are you dropping? When are you dropping? I'd when be like, soon. I'd be like, soon. When you feel like it. But yeah. it's like, for me, it's the learning process because I would never want to sell you something that I wouldn't wear myself. Mm -hmm. no, and that's yeah, facts. That's so, facts. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So it was just like a learning process. And I did stuff like the heat press thing. Yeah. So I went from that to screen printing because I, I learned throughout the process that screen printing can last 30, 40 years. But that, if you, I mean, not that, that's, that's going to be but, um, like with, um, heat press, the heat press, yeah. after you wash it a couple of washes, it, it can not be good quality. So, right. I just want my stuff to be good quality. So it's like the learning quality process. over quantity, so quality important. over quantity. It's every time. so important. I learned that through cutting hair too. Yeah. When you give good quality haircuts. You get more people yeah. to really fuck with you like that. Yeah, so. I know that's very true. I learned that from my dad because, um, like growing up, my dad would take us shopping maybe once or twice a year, mm -hmm. and we would go to like Nordstrom and we'd pick maybe one to three things. That's it. <laughs> it's so expensive, but it was expensive, yeah. and I used to like complain and be like, "This is not shopping." He'd be like, "This stuff is it's it's gonna last. It's quality to yeah. keep you warm. It looks good," and. 
those items, some of them, like it was high school till today, I still have them yeah. and they're in perfect condition. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's so important. You know, it's better to really, um, what is it called? Um, invest yeah. in oh, quality yeah. Yeah. when you have a brand, what, no matter what it is. You know? I actually saw something um, on the internet that explained how it's better to spend your money on something that's quality it actually costs you more to try to save money. Because mm-hmm. let's say you go to like a Walmart and you buy a jacket from Walmart. Every year, you're going to have to buy a new jacket. Yeah. But let's say you go to Nordstrom, you buy a Canada Goose jacket or a Montclair jacket. That jacket could last you 10. 10 years. Off you know? Tops, yeah. And you're not having to buy a jacket every single year. So yeah. you might spend $1,200 at once. But then in over 10 years, if you're buying Walmart jacket, you might spend... Five thousand, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So I, that's how I look at it, and you know, quality. Some some people like the cheaper stuff, yeah. So you, you got to find the people that you. Spend I, yeah, I don't think it connects with people like when they're spending that. Oh, they're like it's cheaper right now, but they don't know how much. And like also the tear and wear, like yeah. could be less than a year. It yeah. could one wash and it's ruined, you mm-hmm. know. Um. So do you feel like? That's for both of you guys. Like that's what uh, defers you. Mashallah, you have the adhan. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. <laughs> um, do you feel like um, quality is what differentiates? Because there's a lot of people starting clothing brands, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and I always ask people like, why should I buy yours compared to the homies, you know, next door, you know, whatever. So like, what do you feel like for both of you guys makes your brands different? Um. I would just say, like I said, my cr- type of creativity, because I already do real estate, which is a, a heavy, a heavily saturated market of, you know, entrepreneurs. Same with a clothing brand. Like you said, there's a lot of us, but what you got to think to set apart is the quality, but also my type of design. That's why I don't go online and use templates. There's a lot of templates online. I've seen it all. Like you can pay for them and put it on clothes and get your stuff selling fast. But I got drawings dated back to like a year and a half ago just because i took my time on like hand designing and custom designing which cost me more from a graphic designer because he has to custom make things i'm thinking of so um same with the the quality um i spent the extra i think five per for extra products for um quality just because it costs more but i'm like i mean i want these people to come back to me again as soon as they get it like Mm -hmm. it's the hottest but it feels good Mm -hmm. i'm big on comfortability and on uh, quality. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Like essentials, it's the most simple brand ever, but the reason people pay a hundred dollars for it is because of the quality. Mm-hmm. Right. So I mean, I, that's that's the biggest thing to me. Yeah. Um, for me, I would definitely one hundred and ten percent agree with everything you said. Um, for my brand, I'd say that um, the attention to detail that I put into mm-hmm. my brand. Because I understand that not everybody is going to support you. And when you have a clothing brand, a lot of people make the mistake of making a clothing brand just to make money. I don't care about the money. Like, it comes with it. It's good. Like, you know, for me, it's about the attention to detail. Am I happy making the clothes? Like, I actually like the process of making clothes. It makes me happy. Um, 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 um. Uh, another thing is also the storytelling is very important in a, when you're making a when you're making a clothing brand. Okay, tell us a little bit about the elaborate. What do you mean by storytelling? Like you can't just a lot of people would see someone else succeeding in a certain area and they'll try to jump on that just mm-hmm. because they think there's a lot of money in it. For me, I'm a big dreamer. This goes back decades. That's why I am where I am today. I still live. That's another reason is my brand, the collection I'm dropping uh, this year is called Vintage Memory because I'm trying to remember myself when I was younger. That's beautiful. You know, Mm -hmm. like when you were 10, when you were 10, we all had dreams. But as you grow older, society tells you, like, you got to live this way. You got to do this. For me, it's like all the dreams that I had when I was young, I have to make it happen. Otherwise, I'd be lying to myself Mm -hmm. and I'm not really a true dreamer. And my brand is for everyone that's just like that. Yeah. Everyone that still has a dream, like guys like him. Mm-hmm. I don't know him like that, but I can relate to him because <coughs> I know he has a dream. Same with you. You're doing a podcast right now. You have a dream to become, maybe you wanted this when you were younger. And maybe it's, you got to share your story on that too. 
It's about storytelling and and how much detail you put in what you're doing. Yeah. For me, that's what it's about. Yeah. No, I love that. That's yeah. amazing. And um, also kind of want to touch base, um, like you've been back home, mm -hmm. um, back to, to Senegal, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. Um, did you feel like going back home recently also kind of like re-motivated you or kind of like added some sort of sentimental value like when you came back and you went back to the drawing board and also like just as a young man like what was your experience like going back home um when i was going back home actually i was going through a lot of turmoil in my life and i didn't really know what the reason was why i was going back i just missed it but when i came back it was cool, but now that I'm missing how I went back two years ago, because it's been a while, mm -hmm. I'm really sitting back and thinking about all the stuff I did and all the mistakes I've made in life. But like, I'm we're in America, you know, mm -hmm. like this, we can't play with this, yeah, you know. And only if you if you dream big, you can make it, yeah. But then it's a lot of things that can hold you too, and it's a lot of distractions and. Going back home definitely woke me up. It like, you know, just yeah. made me realize like I can't really play with the opportunity that I have. Yeah, I'm not gonna be 20 forever. Yeah, and I feel like our 20s is our most important. Oh, 100. Yeah. percent like, Yeah. How do you guys um, limit your distractions? I feel like, especially as like you know, young black men, especially right now in your prime, like early 20s, there's so much distractions. Like, that's so amazing that you're doing real estate. You started your own brand. Like, not a lot of, like, 22, 23-year-olds can say that, you know? So, like, how do you stay focused, limit your distractions, you know, focus on your future, really? Um, for me, for me, it's a little more personal, I would say. Um, I have a lot of family, a lot older than me and a lot younger, but I'm the only one in this middle age. And we didn't come from, like, success or anything, so I felt like it was upon me to do it, you know? Um, so I, I feel like I should take advantage of every opportunity, especially being young in real estate. I'm around a lot of successful people, and I'm hearing a lot of information. People my age wouldn't normally hear. So for me, it's like taking advantage because I hate looking back on something like, oh, wow, I should have took action on this. So I have that pre-thought already when I'm hearing this information, I'm having these opportunities to show million dollar houses or be around people that will teach me how to make a million dollars repeatedly. So it's kind of like, you don't want to, like he said, you don't want to play with that. Right. So I feel like, um, it, it outweighs everything like the party and the fun, the other things that may distract you. Um, it just kind of weighs heavy on me and I'm very self judgmental. Like I'll kind of get on myself about doing something I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. So I would say that helps me limit distractions on a daily mm -hmm. and then, wanting to be the one to change the family legacy so i feel like it's important to yeah utilize the time while i'm young because once i get past 30 40 my body's not going to be the same you shouldn't waste time in your 20s right and that's the main excuse i hear is like you're 20 you should slow down you have time to me it's not time mm -hmm. time doesn't exist yeah. if i have the means and the tools right now to go get a million dollars i'm gonna do it right so Absolutely. forget the distractions right now i have a million dollars when i'm 30 then you can do fifty you or yeah. yeah, when I retire. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, you gonna yeah. get there too, bro. Don't worry. Yeah. Are you just too? Guys both oh, so. You gonna get there. We like I that. love that. So, um, in this day and age, you know how important does like marketing play to get like <sighs> yourself out there? And how do you guys do marketing? Is this is it an obstacle? Is something you guys are learning as well, or is it you know like what kind of tools? Like what advice would you give when it comes to marketing? We live in 2023. You got to market. That's just it. It's yeah. just that simple as that. If you don't know that, then you got a lot of homework to do. Mm -hmm. That's just that. Yeah. Like you have. To so like when it comes to like marketing, like social media, is that's a big, powerful tool that you guys use. Social media. 100%. Yeah. Um, word of mouth. I think with marketing, though, one thing that helps a lot is creating the right relationships. Right. And like you were saying earlier, like how do I keep myself not distracted from all the things, my environment. Right. Mm -hmm. I would say... My environment. Yeah. I would say the biggest thing in... <laughs> the biggest thing in, like, big markets... Another thing is social media. It's a very, very big market. The biggest market ever. Um, It's to be creative. That's what I call it. I call it creative marketing. So, in real estate, I'm kind of like the, the thumbtack. Mm -hmm. I don't look like a regular agent. I still have a lot of tattoos, braids... I don't talk or act the same, but I do very good business. But 
my thing is I'm my content is different from organic content. I don't just stand and just talk numbers all day. I'll make mm-hmm. it creative. What is gonna make someone else watch this video? Which so is what people it, are gonna relate. There's oh people yeah, out there that's gonna relate to that. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I I rather do it original and raw than kind of be like a cookie cutter kind of. Mm-hmm marketer agent because people yeah. scroll past I scroll past that yeah but if something makes me laugh or I can relate to something or it looks cool or something like that's what I implement into my content it's like well how can I be different from other agents or how can I show I'm different but yeah it's not really really me being different it's really me being me I never took that out of myself when it came to being an agent it's just it was like okay well I'm still Marshawn but I'm a professional now so mm-hmm. I feel like that's why um my content comes organically yeah to be honest but it's creative. I'll try to create a way to catch somebody's eyes or to get a reaction because that's yeah. what social media is. Once you get some traction and a reaction, it'll go viral, get more numbers. So being creative in any market, whether it's clothes, business or anything, just being kind of an off brand from what people are usually seeing. Yeah. And that's I think what people can relate to is like the authenticity of that. People love anything authentic you know yeah. and relating to you personally like that's that's a big thing that that you mentioned and you also mentioned like your environment i think that's a huge thing like i've always noticed your environment like people you've always hung around with is older people and like people like mature mindset people who've like made it people who are also like working on making it um the people that you surround yourself around is like super important that's so. the most important yeah oh, yeah that's the most important. Yeah. If you can't surround yourself with people that are like-minded, you mm. have to learn how to be by yourself for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Which that is good too. Yeah. Because then you get you give your mind time to think and, and become creative. Yeah. Because for me, like, I moved to Miami. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that I met that are way better than, as at least financially, got yeah. way more money than me. But then I had to also remind myself, like, you're not there yet. You got to take a step back. At least you saw it. You were in those rooms, but you weren't ready for it. Yeah. And I had to, I could have still been in those rooms today, but I had to tell myself, like, if you want to be in this room and make a bigger impact that you're making right now, you have to step back and get your shit together. Yeah. And then come back. Because Miami is expensive. Yeah. A lot of distractions. Yeah. There's shit to do Monday through Monday. Yeah. Hella people to meet. A lot of different successful people. And... I had to go back to Madison, where I where I originally started everything. Mm-hmm. That's hard. And hard then hard. slept on my mom's couch like 10 months. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew that. I'm going to work every day. People looking at me like, oh, you came from Miami. You was with Spot em, Got em, and Kodak and all these people. Mm-hmm. But really, they don't know. I'm in my mom's house trying to figure, like, trying to really get my yeah. shit together because I saw how people make it in life and what people have. And the problems we worried about, that's little to yeah. them. And it's like, if this little problem to them is so big to me, there's something I have to figure out. Yeah. So it's like, you got to step back sometimes, Mm -hmm. depending on it. Sometimes you got to be lit. Sometimes you got to be chill. You got to know yourself. Balance. You got to have the balance. Mm -hmm. So environment Mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah. You hang around, you could have been like some other type of person, you know? I wouldn't have you here right now. Because then I know like we're not Mm like-minded. You're here right now because you got shit going on. I got shit going on. When I see you post on social media, it motivates me. I hit you up because you're consistent. You've been doing this for, you, you're you consistent. It's not like you're showing any oh, laziness. Oh, I'm doing this one day and the next day I'm this other person and you're useful. Yeah. You're consistent. And I'm like people like that. It's like-minded because I know you're going somewhere in life. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, also, like... How about, I love that I was going to get into that segue of like, how do you, what do you do to take care of your mental health? Especially when you guys are so busy, what are some things and what's like some things that you would suggest for young men? Because we're in this hustle era, stand on business era, you know, oh, everybody's yeah. like, <laughs> stand on business, stand on business. But yeah. that can be stressful, you know, especially like with us, like we all got families to feed. We're always thinking about money, like all of that stuff. But like, what can we do to like, I mean, at the end of the day, we have to take care of ourselves if we're going to be um, delivering the best, you know? So what are some things that you guys do for your mental health that works for you guys? I'll let you go ahead. Uh, I'm going to just say, you know, and this is just off of me kind of figuring this out through life. Um, and it's an open fact. Anybody knows, but your mind is your temple. So taking care of my mind first. But once you think about the most important time of the day, which is the morning time, um, 
because it's it's before the whole day happens. So I'll make sure I get my mind right before the whole day happens because you don't you don't never know what's gonna happen throughout your day. So just off a quick reaction, you could you know lose it without right. getting your mind right in the morning. So what I'll do is I wake up and I'll stretch, I'll meditate, you know, breath control, kind of get ready because it it changes my day. You know, uh, regardless of what I'm going to face, whether it's a lot of business, talking to a lot of people, um, facing bad news from anything. Um, so that helps a lot. And then finding a, re- a way to release your tension, whether that's working out, whether that's playing a sport or doing anything. But I personally, I go work out, make sure I stretch, drink a lot of water, but yeah. keep myself calm uh, in a lot of situations. I would say that takes care of itself. Um because once you stress your temple out too much, it'll start to show in your body right. what, a, what a lot of your, your movement, your hair, um, your skin. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, you know, take care of your temple. Okay, take yeah. care of your mind. We got both of you guys' skin and hair is glowing, by the way. Like, <laughs> y'all need to tell us your skin and hair routine because, mashallah, you guys really, Thank really you. take care of yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't, just water. And I don't, that's what I'm saying, I don't. I, I, I can't say I don't stress. I limit the stress. You, you, know? like, you find ways to balance it. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. Take them deep breaths. You yeah, know? that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tap into How about you? I know you stay in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just started hitting the gym like January and I just fell in love with it. So it's just part of my routine. But as far as like stress, for me, I look at stress as like a positive thing. I actually like stress on my end because it makes me feel like there's something to be done. There's something to be worked on. I don't like feeling like too comfortable like that. Mm. I feel like when my back is against the wall, it's like I don't got nowhere to move forward. And I know sometimes like that's a bad advice to give. No, that's great. Yeah, that's but great. it's like that's I'm just from perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I like stress. I mm. like when I'm because I know it's it's a problem that needs to be taken care of. That's the only reason why I'm stressed about it. Yeah. Not not all problems are bad problems. Like we I, have a all, lot of good honest, problems. Honestly, yeah. all problems are good problems. Yeah. Cause it's not gonna be a problem forever. Yeah, you know, you're not gonna be down forever. You might be down one day, up the next day, but just always stay level. You know, always stay level minded. Mm-hmm. Me, like, I'm a Muslim. I don't pray every single day. I I really want to start praying every single day. Inshallah, like, yeah, you know, prayer. but I go to the mosque every Friday, and that just makes me feel better. Although I'm supposed to pray like five times a day, when I go to the mosque, I really go and pray and speak to Allah and do my prayers after. I, after this is salam alaikum warahmatullah salam alaikum warahmatullah everybody will get up and leave and I'll sit there and actually pray mm-hmm. because I feel like I just need to yeah, get a lot of stuff off my chest you know mm-hmm. and then after that it's like a reboot Yeah. but I don't know when I wake up in the morning I just I'm my own boss so I kind of like do what I want mm-hmm. but when I wake up I just wake up and go I don't really like do much I wake up go get off work my day my life is like boring I just go to work get off work so it's blessing. Go to the though. gym. Yeah. After the gym, I'm with my girl. My mm-hmm. girl makes a lot of stress too as a young man mm-hmm. go away because when I was single, I'd wake up every day. I'm thinking about a different girl every day. Bro. <laughs> now it's like you got a girl, so she You have a person. Exactly. That helps you're not you you're not see. thinking about right. Distractions. Yeah, that's like such a big distraction, like when you're single. I don't know, for me, she keeps me like level. level. She tells me the shit that Another person probably would be scared to tell me. Mm-hmm. So I, since I met her, my life been you know. That's amazing. So That's great. That's yeah, because I I don't think about when I'm single. I wake up think about this girl, this girl. I gotta text this girl. I gotta do this. That's like a big distraction yeah. that took a lot of my time. And sometimes people might make you feel some type of way, and it might mess up your day. It might mess up your mind. You're too yeah. busy thinking about this and that. When you when you could use that time to focus on other things, right? So for me, I say that my life boring, but your life is lit. It's not boring. <laughs> your life is lit. Yeah, that's, crazy. that's amazing. How about you? Uh, with what? Oh, did I? Did you already answer? Like what? He spoke after, but the was it a? Um, was there another question? No, no. Okay, sorry. You did answer how you already love all the stress. My bad. Okay. Um, he drink water. Yeah, he, he said. Yeah, out. he does works out all that stuff. Uh, um, so. When it comes to, since you guys are both in the fashion industry, technically, um, who are some like icons that you guys look up to or like maybe have like motivated you, like influenced you, you love to wear maybe, like rock? Mm. Um, 
to be honest, I don't I don't have like a set. Like I've I've been influenced um recently with my fashion by like newer clothing brands, streetwear. But um I'll look at older fashion and it doesn't really always have a name to it. I just look at the style and the feel, the fit, the flair, what's making this piece different from other ones. Um so that's where I'll kinda get my inspiration from is like what's different. Yeah. You know? And implementing something like I took a regular pair of sweatpants and added multiple jawstrings. Like that's something I I normally don't see, but it's like something like to like I said to throw off from what you're normally used to. Yeah. Unique. Um. Yeah. So I just kind of I don't know, I get my inspiration from from like older fashion. Yeah. Or like anything that has their their flair on it. It's not it hasn't been specific for me to be honest. Yeah. Um. Not really. Or maybe like a. Who, I can't really think of anybody. No, that's not really. Fine. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I can't think fine. of nobody. I you, really you're the type maybe of person. Maybe one day somebody will think of you. As yeah, their exactly. So. You know. Yeah, I and you're so. the type like when you see something and then it just like it sticks with you. It's not like a specific yeah. person. I love that. How about you? Me, Virgil Abloh. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Virgil. Yeah. Because he's a big. First, he graduated from UW Madison, mm-hmm. which is where I live now. And when I came to America, <clears throat> that's. Like when you ask me where I'm from, America, I say Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's where that's where UW is. He talks about simplicity. He talks about always going back to a ten year old, a little child. You know, creativity. And for me, I can relate to that a lot. And then after he passed, R. P. Him, that really motivated me because it's like he made something. That'll last a lifetime. It's a legacy, a yeah. A legacy. Mm-hmm. And he passed, and he's still here. Mm-hmm. He made his dreams become a reality. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm, I'm talking about Dreamboy all day. What kind of person would I be to sell this brand or whatever, and then I'm not even dreaming my, my own self? And him passing, that, that gave me a lot of motivation. Like, bro, you got to you gotta go, you know? Like, mm-hmm. you never know. I want to I wanna leave something back that way people can really remember me and, like, appreciate my time here. It's not about the money. It's not about the haircuts. It's not about the clothes. It's about, they're going to be like, that person really went for it. That's all I want. Like, yeah. whether That's I fail, win, facts. whether the clothes do good, whether the cuts do better, it's like, at least he tried. He right. went for it, which is what all dreams about. Yeah. That's You know, what, I, what I've what i been telling people is risk is healthy. Um, You know, like, when you dip your toe in, like, the pool and it's cold, you don't want to get in? Where you finally jump in and you kind of get used to it. And that's kind of what I do. I kind of like, I throw myself against the green. Like I'll jump into something I don't even know if I'm capable of handling, but I don't put the thought in my head. Mm-hmm. Like when I started real estate, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm like, I don't know if I can really sell a house. Or I don't know if I can really do it, but I, who am I to say I can't until I try, you know? Um, it was a risk I'm taking. I risk like a lot of money. I risk a lot of hours, months, uh, years, years on this. Um, same with the brand. Uh, but risk is healthy. I feel like a lot of people have to get out of their comfort zone because getting out of your comfort zone is the only way you grow. Right. That's why, um, like, I have this motivational story on my Snapchat, and I'll constantly leave them, like, tips and messages. And one of the messages is, um, or one of the tips is, like, change your routine either one day of the week or some time of the day. Just throw it off, you know, get out of your comfort zone because um, it, it's healthy for growth and change, you know? Yeah, I agree. I love that. And yeah, let me say one more thing. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry. I love that. You I'm guys African, so I be said <laughs> one more. <laughs> one more thing. Yeah. One thing I always try to remember. I think like Les Brown said this, or Denzel Washington said this, or somebody. But it's like, let's say you're on your deathbed, right? And on the, when you're in your deathbed, you got all these ghosts around you, of like all the ideas, all the things you wanted to bring to life, everything. That you never brought to life, and they're like all looking at you, asking you, "Why you? Ain't, why the fuck you? Ain't, you know, mm-hmm. like you gonna let me die with you? Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever gonna know." For me, like I don't never the the worst pain in life is like, for me, I'd be very disappointed in myself if I about to die and I'm sitting there and all these ghosts of all these ideas and dreams and all these things I wanted to do just sitting there looking at me like, yeah. what the "Fuck, like nigga, you, you mm-hmm. where was you at? Where was you at, bro? Like this you whole time." Doing and then they all die with you. And you will never get to know. Yeah. You will never get to know. The world will never, like, we never know how close Take we are. You know? Yeah. So I always try short. to remember that. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Um, okay, so what's dropping? When is it dropping? Where can we find you guys? Mm. Um, 
me per- <laughs> uh, me personally i'm 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 all over with my accounts like i said um the brand i should be dropping in about like two weeks mm-hmm. uh, i used to be expecting these uh please me sweats um something i designed too i got hats on the way that's dope um thank you yeah so my my brand page is the hottest one dot co uh, my personal page is uh baby hefner two underscores and i got a business page for real estate is um the realest agent Cool. And we'll make sure that we tag all of those. I appreciate that. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, no, we'll time. definitely tag all of that in our Instagram and our YouTube. Yeah, awesome. Sure. How about you, Dream Boy? For me, I'm just taking things slow mm-hmm. because when I was younger, I learned that sometimes when you go too hard in things, you might spend more money than you needed to and things don't go as well. So it's like, it's okay. Like, I'm not a big, big brand yet. So it's like, I don't have to put all my all that pressure on myself to like, Oh, I'm gonna drop a hundred thousand yeah. shirts, like yeah. man. Yeah. First, I want to make it super limited. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a, the first drop on my birthday next Tuesday, November 14th. Okay. Make sure you go on the website dreamboyclothing.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna drop. I'm still learning, like, uh, like, uh, like we said earlier, right? The failures, trial and error. I don't even know how the spot of Shopify going really work if you know mm-hmm. i don't know none of like i'm learning okay i've never dropped before mm-hmm. on on the, on the website so i'm learning okay so i'm gonna drop some shirts i'm gonna drop a virgil graphic shirt that's super fire it's gonna be very limited it's gonna be like few pieces on each size just to make everything super and it's only gonna drop once too okay but I, if you don't have it that's it that's it it's, mm-hmm. it's too that's bad funny. you might have to buy it from somebody else yeah or something Mm-hmm. They might charge you more for it because they bought it for yeah. retail. They might get it on resale. That's I don't know. It's yeah. up to them, you know? Yeah. It's like create that uh, exclusive feel. It's exclusive yeah. feel. I got, some, I got some limited editions coming out, too. Yeah. Yeah. For my stuff, stuff everything's going to be limited. Yeah. So for the first drop on my birthday, instead of celebrating the birthday on some go to the club, pop bottles yeah. and shit, I want to, you know, do something for meaningful. myself yeah. that's going to be meaningful. It's like I'm always remember mm-hmm. your 24th birthday, Kobe year, mm-hmm. you focused on your goals yeah. you did a dream that you always want to do even when you like i'm scared like i don't know how like if that shit don't do good i'm gonna feel horrible you know yeah it's but okay. it's like it's okay you yeah. know but i think it's gonna do good because people fuck with me they always people have been I, asking I like yo where's time, dream boy you know? yeah i know it's gonna do good yeah, yeah it is so. gonna do good i want a dream boy trench coat I remember you like were playing around with the jacket yeah, one time, and I was like, "I want that." Joint. Yeah, <laughs> I want that. And I don't know. You got to figure it out. Uh, no, I'm a, but I'm a drop. I need a coat. I think the second drop I'm gonna do since it's the winter time. Yeah. For right now, I just want to get in people's hands so they can yeah. see the quality. Say, "Oh, I got something that's you know a dream boy." Mm-hmm. Um, for the second drop, I think I'm gonna do the puffer jacket. Yeah, the white bro, one. that white puffer. Oh my god, I yeah. was on. I was Everybody's on asking for that, bro. Yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> so fire. I'm gonna do that for the winter time, and you know, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, you yeah, know? step we'll by see. step. We're just dreaming right now, so yeah. If it works, we keep going. If yeah. it doesn't work, we go back to the drawing board and do it better. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the putting. Risk. Yeah, I'm not putting that much pressure on myself. Yeah, like, you know, I love that. That's awesome. Well, let's end off with our last question of the night, and it's. You know, what's some advice that you have to your viewer, to our viewers, anyone that's watching this, that you can leave leave them with? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I say dream. You know, follow your dream. Mm-hmm. Don't let a job hold you from following your dream. Don't let money hold you. Don't let people hold, follow your dream, man. Because when you die, it's going to be you by yourself in your grave. I don't know what's going to happen there. Maybe you're going to be sitting there still dreaming. I don't, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, man, just dream, bro. Yeah. Like, just follow your dream. Don't be scared. Yeah. That's all I have. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got I got two words of the night, I would say. I'm going to just leave a message on is uh, invest and relentless. Um, number one, invest. Invest in anything you can. But number one, which is always 100% free, is yourself. Uh, anything... You may spend, whether it's time or actual money or sacrifice for your own personal gain for for more. That is an investment. Um, you should never count it as a loss. So that's what I will say, invest or invest in real estate. Um, this is not even being a salesman, but 90% of um, millionaires come from real estate. So I'm going to be one of the first people to just invest in real estate in my in my family. Yeah. Um, besides like a few elders. But um, at, a, at a very young age, I want to definitely invest. But 100% go invest in yourself. 
um, and then be relentless. You know, um, nothing happens the first time around. You know, it can, and that's looked at it to me as a miracle, but just come back over and over and over again. Because once faith and God see that you are relentless, you're not giving up, they see you really want it, then that's what, that's when you'll get your, like, your gift, you know. All this pushing you've been given, that's when you'll give your, your kind of, um, your reward, I feel like. But, you know, just don't give up, be relentless, no matter how many times you lose, you know, just keep fighting. I feel like that's, that's all it's about. Yeah, I love that. Dream. Dream. Relentless you. Invest. I really love that. Congratulations so much. Thank I'm you. genuinely so proud of you guys. I love you guys a generation because I know I don't think I was like this focused when I was in my like early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I was, things would have been so different. So I love that you guys are setting this example and we need to see this is what this platform is for. Eat and talk, food for thought. You guys are you guys are fulfilling people who are watching this, you know? That um, like and that. that's the other Bro, where's my food at, man? <laughs> this last time you know what? No first food, of all, bro. oh, cause last time we were fasting, and oh, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the first time he came, we were fasting, and today he was like, "You saw, I'm going to a dinner." Da, da, da. So that's why I was like, yeah, "You know yeah, what?" Yeah, so, yeah. so maybe the third time, third, third, yeah, third time's yeah. the charm. We yeah, gonna have some food, child, you know. Bro, so, bro. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, you really filled. You guys both filled my soul. I'm not even kidding. Like this was so influential, and I really, gem I didn't know how this conversation was gonna go, and like this was really, really amazing. Um, obviously, like I've known Od for some time and now that i met you like i'm really really excited to like learn more about you and i, I think I people are gonna you know watch this and like really feel inspired and um i'm excited for your drops uh, really excited to get my hands on some dream boy finally yeah. you know some time coming and um i love how you guys are really um it's not like a, a a rush thing. It's not a clout thing. It's not like I'm doing this just to do this. Like you guys are really doing it for yourselves mm -hmm. and you guys are taking your time and that's so important. So thank you, um, thank you guys for coming. Thank you, thank, you. thank you guys for watching. We will link their websites and their Instagram mm -hmm. and everything on our social media pages um, and our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>